What are some of the areas uh, that you see evolving from a research and development perspective? Research and development. Trends to look for, pitfalls to avoid. Whether it's the use of chatbots for institutions and services, or the transformation of healthcare data into actionable information, AI is clearly changing our daily lives. But what of the downsides? Moderated by Bian Meinhardt, University of Marburg. Michael Herman, Neon Nation. Mike Yeshoff, Secumatrix. Uh, good morning. So we have a, a good intersection between people that are deeply involved in AI, uh, blockchain, uh, DIOs and governance, uh, legal aspects of that. And as a research and development topic, I'm sure most people are interested in uh, perhaps what does the future hold? Uh, looking forward to what might be coming in the next couple of years, perhaps what might uh, be coming in the next 10 years. And so we're going to try and uh, share for some of our perspectives. Um, let's start by uh, having each of the panel members introduce themselves. Yeah, thank you. Welcome, everyone. My name is Bian Minert. I'm a lawyer from Germany and researcher at the University of Marburg. And my research is in the interface between blockchain technology and AI, especially AI-based governance regarding DAOs and um, other autonomous systems and organizations, and how you could look at them from a corporate law perspective. Uh, thank you very much. My name is Mike, uh, and I'm founder of company Spoken. Uh, we are developing uh, artificial intelligence applications, uh, machine learning applications, and deep learning solutions. <laughs> I'm Michael Herman. I'm a self-sovereign blockchain architect. I'm the founder of the Trusted Digital Web Project. Um, and uh, I guess our first question will be, um, we'll kind of look at this in different time frames. If we think of just the last year, what's the most interesting or novel development uh, in AI or blockchain or the combination of the two that, that you've seen? By? So I think for me, one of the most interesting things I, thought, I saw in the last years is that AI-based governance and decision-making is getting more and more adopted, like that AI artificial intelligence and algorithms are entering the boardrooms of um, corporations and they make more and more decisions. And we also see that with like DAOs, that they, which combine both technologies. And I think for many of you, I think it will be a, um, something you know, like 2014, 14, all of it started when Vital, like an algorithm was getting into the board in Hong Kong-based um, capital venture or venture capital. And it helped the board members or the directors to make decisions. And of course, every, everywhere in the newspapers it was written, now we have an algorithm in the board. From a legal perspective, it's not true, but it really supported the decision-making process. So I think we will see that coming more and more, and that was one of the most interesting things that I'm also involved in. Mike? Um, I would say that uh, this year and like previous year, uh, the most trending technology in uh, artificial intelligence was the development of uh, NLP solutions, uh, especially virtual assistants and voice-enabled applications. Uh, so the call center, consent, contact centers were just like pilot, pilot project where we see the totally virtual assistance where you can call and uh, there is a robot that responds in you. Uh, such technology will be uh, growing uh, more and more and will be, um, we'll see the virtual assistance for employees, for customer service, for, uh, for manufacturing services where the uh, people that are interacting with the computers will have uh, the access to the information they need uh, more quickly, faster, and uh, with, um, uh, they will increase their productivity. I guess for me, as uh, the blockchain guy on the panel, um, the most interesting thing is uh, people are starting to talk actually a little bit less about the blockchain and more about the applications or the workloads that can run on top of the blockchain. So the original use or, of you know, blockchain or distributed ledger technology, of course, was cryptocurrency. And you need to think of that as just an application you know, that runs on top. Um, probably the, in the last year, the, the, the one aspect that we're starting to see more and more discussion about is um, digital identity or decentralized identity. 
um, and that morphs into something larger called self-sovereign identity. So I think uh, the most interesting thing over the last year is people just starting to see the blockchain as a technology, more and more business applications, and the one that's of particular interest to me then is, is digital identity. Um, so there's a saying that says, uh, when we look two years out, we always overestimate what we can accomplish in two years, but we underestimate what we can accomplish in 10. So if we take that initial perspective of uh, a two-year time frame, um, what are some of the areas uh, that you see evolving from a research and development perspective? So I think in a couple of years from now, as blockchain technology and AI gets more and more sophisticated, and it, it's known that especially like regarding some information processing, AI is superior to human kind or to human um, board directors. And I think we will see in a couple of years from now that there was not only the possibility that board directors will use AI in the decision-making process, but that it will be mandatory for them to use it, that it will be a duty for them. Because if, from a corporate law perspective, when a board director makes a decision, he needs to get all the information he needs and to process the information in the right way. And if AI can do it better than him in a couple of years, it may be um, a duty that he used this. So I think it will be really big and people are, most people are not thinking about it at the moment that AI will enter the boardrooms. And I think blockchain technology really helps with that as it enables to track AI and to track the decision-making process of AI. And as you also said, and you're working with your company that more and more things can be done with AI and human can, can be focused more on the, just the judgment of things, what it's not possible at the moment with AI, but just like due diligence and all these processes, I think this will all be done by AI and I think it will really help um, to be more cost efficient and time efficient. So yes, uh, the AI is doing like human augmentation. Uh, what I also ought, uh, want to add uh, about the de uh, like development trends and research trends that um, this year and like uh, probably next year, uh, there are a lot of open source technologies in AI and machine learning development. So uh, a lot of companies publish their uh, technologies uh, on a GitHub, and uh, it all uh, brings like the competition in artificial intelligence, not in the technology, but in the uh, implementation on the customer side. So in the next few years, I think we will see uh, a lot of applications in a computer vision, uh, in a image recognition technologies, uh, in a voice, uh, a voice technologies, NLP technologies, uh, like data analytics, uh, which are um, very different, but they're uh, using the same like open source uh, technologies. So for me, um, if I s start with this idea of digital identity, I think one thing that we're gonna see more and more of is uh, uh, using blockchain to reinforce trust in the information we receive, the information we process, um, this idea of what I call data notarization. Uh, the fact that we can work with data in place, not all of that data obviously uh, can go on the blockchain or you, can you afford to write it to the blockchain? But the idea of, of, of notarizing data, taking just like today if you're applying for a passport or some legal document, you need to have that document notarized. We have the digital equivalent of that uh, where just the, the notary signature, if you will, that digital signature is stored on the blockchain. So I think the idea of having more trustful data and being able to process that data where it lives through the AI systems, through the business systems uh, that we currently use. It isn't a, an entirely new paradigm shift. Again, the idea of the, the blockchain falling into the background, acting as the repository uh, from a data notarization perspective. I think that's probably um, something we'll see a lot more of in the, in the next year or two. And again, that's kind of just uh, flying off the wing, if you will, of this uh, evolution of, and use of digital identity. If we were to look a little farther out, if you just had a big crystal ball and could imagine whatever you could imagine, uh, what do you see? So I think, of course, on the one hand, as I explained before, there are a lot of benefits, and I think maybe even 10 years from now, there will be board directors replaced by AI and algorithms because they can do it way faster and way more efficient. But what we're also gonna talk about here is also the downsides, and I think from a legal perspective, it's really, really hard to 
to qualify it from some kind, of, especially regarding liability. If you have like an algorithm making the decision with deep learning and mostly on its own, at the moment you can say that in some way there's a human behind it. And if there's a liability of some, or if something goes wrong, it will always go back to the human who launched it or who needs to watch it and all, all of these things. But when we come to the moment where AI makes decision on its own and really like judges things, when we, then we really have a legal problem. And of course, we, and I think it was discussed in the panel before, we could think of the laws that we have for like special creatures and if they are dangerous and you have them, you are liable for everything they do. But I think this will really harm the innovation because then there will be no sense to create an AI system because if something goes wrong and if a new technology emerges, there's always things going wrong, then you will be personally liable. So I think we will see some kind of personality for AI or some kind of legal entity for them. And probably you're also thinking about that, like what is when the systems are so sophisticated, then there's no human behind that. And I think that's one of the biggest challenges and also a downside, like how when we come to the point that we can't control that good anymore. I Mike? think, yes, that uh, we see a lot of like, uh, um, a lot of good points uh, into introducing the artificial intelligence and uh, uh, machine learning technologies, but uh, there are also a lot of downsides. Uh, I would also add that uh, uh, we start facing the uh, deep faking uh, problem, uh, which are uh, not solved right now when uh, the deep learning methods are used to uh, provide a fake news, fake voice, fake pictures, and uh, to do uh, to mislead the the viewers and uh, uh, probably the next years uh, will would be mostly focused not on the uh, machine learning like development, mostly by about the uh, uh, fixing the troubles that uh, this technology creating. When we, um, I think one question that's probably on people's minds as they think about AI and automation, like we were discussing in the boardroom, and the implications of those decisions. Um, Robotics, not really part of our topic today, but it's closely related. Um, there's probably some social issues that we need to deal with. Um, people perhaps being replaced, people not as many people being needed in certain positions of the workforce. Um, do, what are your thoughts on that? So I think that's always the case, and every time new technology comes up, there comes always the idea, okay, it will cost a lot of jobs, or it will kill a lot of jobs, but I think we need to always go with the technology, and technology will always disrupt, and I think it will also create a lot of new jobs, and mainly humans can focus on things that are not possible at the moment by doing by, with AI, for example, a lot of law firms due diligence takes so many lawyers and it takes so much time, but with the help of AI, it can be way faster and way more efficient. So I think it will just create another jobs and people need to shift towards that side. So I think always when a new technology emerges, it brings new opportunities and we should focus them on them and then more that I think like 50 years or 60 years from now when the processing, for example, of cars got automated, it cost a lot of jobs, but it also created a lot of new opportunities. I totally agree with this uh, with this opinion uh, because like every technology uh, which we have, we uh, it like push us to uh, uh, cut some jobs, but it also creates new opportunities for uh, for people and uh, uh, people who have a new jobs which uh, are now uh, do not exist. Um, I guess looking into my crystal ball into the future. Um, We've talked about digital identity a little bit and talked about data notarization or data that we can trust more. I think one thing that really isn't, um, hasn't really appeared on the scene, hasn't really appeared on the blockchain is the idea of uh, business processes. So we have people, we have all kinds of uh, uh, data and identities that we can trust. The idea of being able to run uh, business processes on the blockchain so that the business processes themselves are stored on the blockchain, the templates, um, as, the, as the business process executes, the state of that business process is, is also written to the blockchain, and it, it completes that triangle of uh, identity, uh, working with cryptocurrency, uh, working with business processes, and being able to uh, enact uh, frictionless commerce, frictionless uh, business activities uh, on the blockchain. I think that's 
if I was to look out 10 years, um, it's going to take that long for all of those different pieces to come together. Um, any closing comments? Yeah, I just, regarding your point, I think the blockchain technology really, the big disruption about it is that it enables people not only to exchange information and goods trustless, but it also enables people to work together in a trustless way, especially in the combination with AI and smart contracts. You can create the decentralized autonomous organizations. And the, one of the biggest things that most people don't see is also the nonprofit sector, when it, where it can disrupt a lot. For example, I just recently read that only 2% of the money that people make in the Western countries is spent to like nonprofit organizations. And I think one of the biggest things is because it's so intransparent. You spend money and you don't really know how much money is going where I want it to go. But when you have like a um, AI-based or autonomous organization on the blockchain, you can really track every penny where it goes. And if you spend $100 and $99 go where you want it to go, I think this can also change the whole nonprofit sector. Right? Uh, yes, uh, the, uh, the AI, AI is, uh, um, can be very closely combined with the blockchain technologies and there are a lot of like applications and examples of such cases. Uh, for example, the um, fraud detection uh, which, uh, which, are using, for example, which are used by Visa and MasterCard and this organization are right now implementing blockchain for, uh, for their transactions to uh, so I think like, such cases are a great examples how this uh, technology is working together. So that's uh, bringing our panel to a, a close here. I'd like to thank Bayan and, and Mike for their participation. And if you have any questions for us, we'll be over here on your right side, uh, on the right side of the stage. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.